Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us, and in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we thank you for your Son, who chose a path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. Point us to the path of obedience and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First lesson is taken from Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. 
When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that, is the, that it is I who sent you. For you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is taken from Jeremiah. O Lord, you know, remember me, and visit me, and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found, and I ate them, and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly, you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Of the, ruthless. the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are set in your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then, 
Jesus told his disciples, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some things standing, some standing here who will not taste death, before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In our lessons today, the first from Exodus, we find Moses and a flock of sheep in the wilderness. The flock does not belong to Moses. They do not represent his success post-Egypt. These animals belong to his father-in-law. Moses has become merely a shepherd, might be the oldest prince to a pauper story. Even though Moses is not able to boast of success, he is a good shepherd. He has learned all the good spots. The fields other shepherds leave untouched because they are too far away, and the patches where winter rain sprouts up surprisingly green grass. Moses will not be home for dinner or even to rest with his wife this night. He is alone with his thoughts and sheep quietly tugging and munching on grass. Moses wanted to help his people. The rage and the sense of justice that boiled inside of him was more than he could control, and it caused him to lash out. He now wears the label of murderer in that one place he longs to be. The rage must bubble up from time to time, knowing his people are still mistreated. But what can he do? He blew it. He had a chance to make a difference, and he botched it up by believing naive and idealistic. He has to find ways to distract him from his grief and sense of helplessness. This day, a special day of distraction pops up, a bush burning but not being consumed The diversion will take hold of his rage and prop it up with resources and support. God affirms that the boiling and the bubbling in his soul are not to be ignored. They are a God-given calling. Moses is naturally hesitant, but God measures that Moses will have everything he needs in time. God will be there to help keep him from lashing out again. God will give him proof of his authority and Aaron to speak when Moses cannot. This time, Moses goes in with backup. Jeremiah, in our second lesson, had a similar sidetrack to his calling, frustrated that the message he is giving is not enough. The people are still wander away from God, Jeremiah turns away from the call fed up with the lack of progress. God's assurances are not helping. These future plans for justice to prevail are ludicrous to Jeremiah. He wants to see the fruits of his message now. He wants progress and hope that his work is achieving something. Jeremiah asks God to remember Many prophets ask God to remember when they speak to God, where Christians often pray in a way that points out to God the areas they would like help with. The prophets see prayer as a way to remind God of the promises already made. We hear them say things like, Remember you are good and just. Remember you are on our side. Remember you promised me you would always be there with me. Jeremiah is asking God to remember who God is and what God has promised, invoking all that goodness to save him from his situation. 
inside. Jeremiah, there is a pain that will not subside. Jeremiah wants God to remember him and all the sacrifices he has made for his call. Jeremiah had made God's justice his holy source of joy and ignored all earthly festivities. Yet through all of this, God has not taken away the pain. The only comfort God seems willing to give is that someday it will be all right. God does not give Jeremiah a path back to his work. God says, you do not need to worry about turning back to the people. The effort that will be worth it is to turn back to God. And when the people see Jeremiah back with God, they will make the move to turn to Jeremiah. Turning back to God will make Jeremiah strong enough to withstand the insults and the debates. Moses and Jeremiah are all aware of their call. Moses and Jeremiah talk about it as a burning. A burning for Moses, it burns a bush in front of him. For Jeremiah, it burns inside his own body. These calls are not easily achieved. Moses once tried to totally botch the effort. Jeremiah gets frustrated at how long it's taking for the people to turn back to God. For Christians, we recognize our call as coming from God. We do not root our call in God. We lose track of who we are and what we are here for. Moses feels his call to help the people, but does not tap into God at first. He leads to rash decisions and mistakes that chase him into the wilderness. Jeremiah lets his disappointment turn him away from God, and he tries to reach the people on his own. And these attempts to live out the call fail because they are not rooted and supported by God. After some time away from the issue, Moses is reintroduced to God and the call. This time he asks questions and gets a full game plan. He determines with God that he will need what he will need and he will go with him. Of course, God also promises to be with him in this effort. Jeremiah expresses his frustration with God. He is honest about who he believes God to be and his feeling that God has not been that for him. God points out that in his effort to turn the people, Jeremiah has turned away himself. God assures Jeremiah that he is still in partnership with God. All, the needs, all he needs to do is to turn back. There is a similar path in us now. This year has had a way of fanning the flames of justice in us. We have remembered calls we forgot about. Maybe they were buried because of past failures. Maybe we foolishly thought we could do it alone. These calls have been reheard because we have had time to pasture with the sheep, to think about the world that we live in. The busyness of our lives has dulled and distracted us from the pain inside of us, and now we realize we need to answer God's call. Social media has made us feel connected to others who will go with us in the fight. We will need the right people by our side to support us when we cannot find the words. Social media does a great job of bringing the right people together to free us from an oppressive system. We need a continuous drive to push forward when Pharaoh says no or changes his mind. That is when we need to realize, along with the pain of justice inside us, is the fire of God's presence within us. God has promised to be with us for what is ahead. We may become frustrated when justice does not show up the right way. We will need to commit to the stick to The thing that should always give us hope that justice will come is that God says it will. Moses was not sure, but God was. Jeremiah wanted to see it now, but God was there to assure that it would happen. 
In that way, we are God's representatives. We are the ones who would make sure things are right and just. Persistent presence and assurance reflected what God says to Moses and to Jeremiah and to us. God. God will be the one who is there. God will be the one who will make sure it is made right. We stand with God and God stands with us in the love of Christ. Let it be so. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> As we gather separately and together in the Spirit, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to each petition with the words, in your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Caring for the church around the world, we pray for a spirit of ecumenical cooperation for the health of congregations during this difficult time. For our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders, hear us, God our Savior. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Seeing before us your good creation, we pray, for the repair of what we have harmed or polar ice, for lands dealing with oppressive heat, 
for fields ravished by storms and fires. Hear us, God, our creator. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Facing so many international problems, we pray for the strengthening of democracies, for peaceful resolutions to conflicts, for researchers seeking a vaccine, <clears throat> for racial justice within our nation, for our legislatures, legis legislators to assist the lives of the poor, for an ethical election campaign. Hear us, God, our mighty fortress. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Surrounded by people with great and hidden need, we pray. <clears throat> for families frightened by the uncertain future, for those whose homes of affected storms, for students deprived of effective education, for re refugees and for prisoners. Hear us, God, our hope. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Aware of all <clears throat> who are sick and suffering, we pray. For all who are facing the coronavirus, for those without medical care, for those we remember here before you, Joanne, Wally, and Ray, hear us, God, our healer. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. Mindful of all who have gone before us in the faith, we offer our thanks for all the saints, famous and forgotten, for medical workers who have died of the virus, for friends and family we have loved, for the promise of everlasting life with you. Hear us, God, all people. In your steadfast love, receive our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom and with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.